Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm going to be asking the question, why use a limited palette? You often hear artists talking about using a limited palette, but why bother? I use a limited palette just about all the time in my own personal work and quite often here um, on YouTube and, of course, on Patreon. And I've got a current exclusive Patreon series ongoing at the moment looking at choosing a limited palette, how to do it, why to do it and explorations involved with that. So if you're interested, follow the link below um, where there's a three part demo exploring in detail the things that I'm going to be sharing with you here in summary form. So today I've been exploring a limited primary palette using three primary colours, alizarin crimson, turquoise and yellow ochre. And I've used Payne's Grey as a neutraliser. And here you can see um, some of the massive range of colours that are available if you mix these three primary colours with Payne's Grey. And I'm hoping that visually this answers the question of why use a limited palette, uh, because hopefully you can see not only is there a wonderful range of um, colours and shades here, but it's also every colour is in really perfect colour harmony with the others because they've all been mixed from the same three colours and that single neutralising colour. So the next exploration is to relinquish the control that I had over the process when I was making decisions about colour mixing and give up control and allow those same colours to mix and marry and mingle by themselves on the page. My board's at an angle of about 20 degrees, so um, when I paint wet in wet, all the colours will drift down the page and gravity will help to blend them. So I've disrupted the blank white page um, with some fine liner marks. Now I'm going to wet the page all over and use exactly the same three colours, alizarin crimson, turquoise and yellow ochre, and of course my neutraliser or toning down colour of Payne's Grey and just allow paint, gravity, paper and water to produce their magic on the page and see what sort of colour blends we get from this process. So I think that will just about do. Um, I've scraped through the paint in places just to add extra variety and see what happens as the colours blend around those scraped marks with the palette knife. And just before we leave it to dry, I hope you can see that what we've done here is almost exactly the same as the colour swatching that I did earlier. But this time I've allowed the paint to do it by itself. We've produced very similar results 
uh, but we've had that sort of random factor of wet in wet painting and wet blending on the page involved. We've relinquished control and ended up with seeing how the paint will behave on the page when we paint wet in wet with this limited colour palette. So now it's time to let it all dry completely. So here's the dried experiment. You can see that everything is lightened quite a bit uh, because of the colour shift that always happens with watercolour. It always is going to lighten back a bit. So out of this mess and madness, let's see what we've got. It'll be easier for us to see and appreciate the colour blends and all the different subtle um, shades and hues if we remove all the tape and then we can kind of look at each little square or rectangle um, and see what's happened inside them. It helps us to sort of see this wet and wet approach in this more sort of abstract way. And it's really nice as we remove the tape to kind of see the colours emerge more clear, clearly. There's more clarity once you see um, that white border around them. So if we take a slightly closer look, we can see that there's still plenty of primary colours there, the blue, the yellow and the red. But we can also see some secondary colours and a lot of amazing subtle neutrals that um, have happened by themselves as these colours have mixed together. And this limited palette has produced such harmonious results. So I think that this combined with the colour swatching that we did earlier, where we had more control over the colour mixing, uh, gives us a really good idea of how this limited palette works together. I did one last experiment. This beautiful abstract landscape was created using those same colours and there's a full demo for that over on Patreon as a part of um, this workshop. And this is using exactly the same colours, turquoise, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre and Payne's grey, but creating um, a painting this time. And I think if I hold up the swatched out neutrals, you can sort of see some of those colours that we found in the exploration earlier with swatching. You can see them happening as they wet in wet blend on the page. You can also see the stronger primaries showing through the secondaries and some of the more desaturated or toned down colours as well. So follow the link below if you're interested in more in-depth workshops um, over on Patreon. So thank you so much for joining me for this YouTube look at um, using a limited um, primary colour palette. Let me know what you think in the comments below. It'll be really interesting to read your comments, as always. Uh, thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. And I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.